Hi, how you doing? This is Stu with Den and DJ, and we are here at Sweetwater Sound checking out the brand new Den and DJ Prime 2 all-in-one standalone DJ console. So standalone means that this DJ console does not need the aid of any sort of computer. Since it has a built-in four-core processor, you can analyze tracks, create playlists, create crates, organize your entire music collection right on the unit. You can even connect to the internet and stream music directly from the internet right on the console without the need of any sort of computer. So we're going to take a look at the overview of the console on the top as well as the inputs on the back and then some unique features that really make the Denon DJ Prime 2 stand out in the market. So starting on the top of the unit here, starting from the upper left we have two microphone inputs. Each has their own individual level. You have a three band shared EQ for these microphones and talk over which means that when talkover is engaged, any sort of music that's playing will actually duck and lower in volume when someone is speaking on the microphone. At the top center of the console, we have a 7-inch multi-gesture touchscreen. That allows you to easily navigate around the entire unit, going in between your crates, your playlist, doing an advanced search, or scrolling, swiping to load, loading it into a track and pinch to zoom as well as needle dropping and many other ways of navigating around the unit. So moving over to the right of the screen we have the master output, the booth output and the auxiliary input. One thing that's really unique on the Prime 2 with the auxiliary input is you're able to actually cue the source to your headphones. So you can listen, pre-listen to what is coming in on the auxiliary before you actually feed that out to the main speakers. Moving over to the right, we have an SD slot and a USB input. And then right below that, we have two effects modules. So these effects modules are assigned to the left and also to the right. And you can quickly scroll through the different effects. As you see, it can pop up on the screen right there what the effect is. And when you load the effect, you have access to not only one parameter, but with clicking the encoder, it moves over to the second parameter as well as a wet dry knob and then the on off. Now moving down to the main part of the console, in the center we have a two channel mixer with three band EQ, trim on top and then a filter low pass high pass right below that. In the center we have a scroll knob to navigate through your tracks. If you don't want to use the multi-touch touchscreen, you can easily click and then scrub through in order to find the song you want and then click right or left to load to the according deck. Now right below that we have view. Now what view allows you to do is not only change in between the browser and the play mode. If you press and hold this, this will go to your menu. Inside your menu you have access to all the utility features of the unit. You have access to all the preferences on the unit where you can customize your preferences and then actually save those custom preferences to your attached media source. So anytime you go to a different unit or step up to the unit, it will actually load your preferences based on what you saved on any one of the units. Also with this button, you're able to hold shift and touch view in order to switch between vertical and horizontal views. Really handy and requested feature. Moving down, we have our headphone section. Now this allows you to either listen directly to whatever channel is being queued or blend it between the cue and the master, or just listen to the full-on master. This really helps if you're in a situation where you don't actually have a booth monitor. You can first cue up the song, then listen how it blends with the master output, and then switch completely over to the master output and listen while you're blending in that song to whatever's coming out of the master. You also have the ability to split the left and the right signal so you can hear the master on one side and then the cue on the other side of the headphones. And then below that you do have your crossfader for blending in between tracks as well as the channel volume faders. Now let's take a look at the decks. The decks are the exact same on both sides of the unit so we're going to have a look here at the left. Now the layout of the deck is very similar to everything else in the Prime series line, such as the SE6000, the 6000M, and the Prime 4. That means when you're accustomed to the layout on the Prime 2, you can just simply move up the line to the Prime 4, an SE6000, and an SE6000M. So let's take a closer look at the deck. Here in the upper left-hand corner, we have our looping section. Now, I can get instant feedback 
in the high resolution display on the center of the jog wheel of the length of my loop and quickly set that automatic loop by pressing in and then releasing that automatic loop by pressing out. I can also set that loop in point and out point while the track is playing back. Moving over to the right, we have the stop time of the track. I can have it instantly stop or I can have it slow down, similar to what a vinyl record would do when you hit stop on an old vinyl record player. Now speaking of vinyl, I can actually activate vinyl mode. Simply hitting vinyl mode here allows it to work like an old vinyl record where I can scrub through the track. But if I don't have that active, it just means that when I'm touching the top of the platter, it simply nudges or drags the track back and forth, adjusting the tempo so I can beat match. Right below that, I have the ability to turn on and off my BPM sync, as well as locking my key and then syncing the key. When I sync the key, that means that when I'm mixing in between two songs, the incoming song is going to adjust the key so it's harmonically matched to the track that I'm currently playing. This is really helpful if you're trying to blend between two tracks in different keys and you want them to sound really well together. It will automatically pitch one deck in order to match the harmonics. Moving below the sync and the key sync, we have our tempo slider here. So right below the tempo slider, we have really quick and easy ways to nudge or pull the track back and forth with the pitch bend buttons. And then holding shift, you're able to adjust the BPM range of that pitch adjustment. Moving over to the left, the sensor button actually acts as reverse. So if you're playing an explicit track and you need to edit out any sort of words that you're not supposed to play, you can just quickly hit sensor and it will instantly reverse. And then when it's done reversing, the track will pick up right where it left off. Very similar to sensor, when you reverse the track, is slip. Slip allows me to manipulate the track while the track is actually playing in real time underneath. So when I'm done manipulating the track, it just picks up where it would have left off. So right on the bottom of the unit, we have our track skip, forward and backwards to load a new track, and then beat jump. Beat jump is really, really convenient. If you're getting to the end of a track and you need to jump back a certain amount of bars, or if you started late in the track, you need to jump forward a certain amount of bars, you simply use the looping feature up here, set the value of the loop, and that corresponds to the value of the beat jump. So if I set it to 16 beats and hit beat jump, the track is then jumped 16 beats forward or 16 beats backwards. Right below beat jump, Q and play. And then in the center bottom of the unit, we have our performance pads. Now these performance pads have multiple different features. Hot cue, you have eight hot cues where you can set different points to jump to in the track. So from hot cue, we have loop mode. So on the first layer of loop mode, I'm able to really quickly set and store eight different loops. That's done really easily just by hitting loop in and then loop out. That then will loop this section of the track and also save that loop for future use. So I can jump back to that loop anytime I want. Pressing loop again goes into the second layer of the looping which means that these are preset loop lengths that I can really quickly on the fly just set preset loop values. And as I go down to the left, the loops just get tighter and tighter. So now let's take a look at roll. Roll, when activated, means that I can actually stutter the track while the track activates slip mode underneath it and plays back in real time. So anything in green is going to be an even value, such as a quarter note, an eighth note, a sixteenth note, while anything in purple is going to be a triplet. So let's just take a really quick look at that. So as I play back the track, So you'll notice while I was stuttering and rolling the track, it was actually playing back underneath with slip mode automatically activated. So when I release that stutter, the track just picks up right where it would have normally left off. And then slice mode allows me to take an eight beat section of the song, slice it up, and then chop it up and resequence it with the pads on the fly. This is really cool for, let's say, remixing a vocal or anything of that sort. So on the first layer here, You'll notice when we activate Slice, it's going to do an 8-beat section, and that 8-beat section is going to move through the track while the track plays back. And then as I hit a pad, it jumps back to that section. 
So that is going to continuously move through the track while the track is playing back. But if I go to the second layer of the slice, it's actually going to lock in that 8-beat section from whatever I see on the screen. So I can just stay in that 8-beat loop and remix on the fly. So if I hit it twice, it's going to now stay in this section. And you can also see that the slices are green, telling me that it's locked into a slice loop. Now, we're going to take a look at the back of the unit, check out the ins and outs, and then go over a few unique features that really make the Prime 2 stand out. So here on the back of the unit, you'll notice there's two USBs for media input, a USB-B to connect to the computer for any sort of firmware updates or transferring music. There's a link cable. Now, the link cable is really important because that allows you to actually connect the Prime 2 to computer using a software called SoundSwitch. Sound switch is really unique because it will analyze your entire library, create a custom light show to it, and then as soon as you pull up a track, it will pull up that light show to that track and automate your entire light rig within your venue or within your party. It really takes a lot of the guesswork out of lighting, and that is using the link cable to the computer, computer has sound switch, and then from the computer you use a USB to DMX cable that automates every single one of your lights, allowing for a professional light show without any sort of work of a light jockey. So moving over from the link cable, we have XLR professional outputs on both the booth and the master, as well as a RCA unbalanced output on the master and the ability to really quickly switch between a stereo and a mono output with the flip of a switch. So now if we take a look at the front of the unit, you do have a headphone output, both a quarter inch and an eighth inch output on that. You have the ability to assign the left and the right channel to either the A and the B of the crossfader or have it set to through so the crossfader is deactivated. And you do have a crossfader contour adjustment here, allowing me to smoothly blend in between the tracks or do a sharp cutoff if I'm into scratching. Now let's take a look at some unique features that really set the Prime 2 apart from anything else on the market. The first really unique feature on the Prime 2 is the ability to install a 2.5 inch solid state hard drive. On the bottom of the unit, there's a bay that you can quickly open up, put in a SATA drive in there, and then seal it up, and then have the ability to load it up to the capacity of that solid state hard drive. Another unique feature on the Prime 2 is track preview. This is an industry first. Track preview allows me to go into my entire collection of songs, and before I even load that track, I'm able to simply press on the artwork and queue up that song and needle drop through that song, hearing it coming through my queue that's activated on the channel, and really quickly and easy listen and see if that's a track I actually want to load without loading it to the deck. And once I decide that I like that track, I can simply swipe over, pick the deck I want to load it to, and instantly it's loaded. So no longer do you have to actually load the track, needle drop through it in order to find the track you want. You can simply do that directly from the browser with Browser Preview. Another really unique industry first on the Prime 2 is the ability to stream from the internet. So we can go in, we can activate Wi-Fi on the unit, connect it right now to Tidal, which is the first streaming service available with more to come in the future, and then scroll through any one of their 40 million songs, simply download it, use the onboard real-time analysis in order to create a track overlay, set the beat grid, find out the key and the BPM of the song, all that data is stored to the connected media source, and then play that song without even having to ever load it onto our media source. So just to recap the industry first, you have the ability to stream directly from the internet, accessing any one of 40 million songs that are currently available, the ability to do onboard analysis, setting beat grids, BPM, key of the song without using a computer, the ability to store a solid state hard drive inside the unit, and the ability to preview tracks from the browser without having to load them into the deck. So that was just a quick overview of the Denon DJ Prime 2 all-in-one standalone DJ console. So if you have any questions, please reach out to your Sweetwater sales engineer and they'll be happy to help.